that as a respiratory therapist, COPD is one of our diseases that we take very seriously. COPD and asthma are the two chronic diseases that the respiratory therapist primarily manages uh, in the hospital. And on a personal basis, I lost my mother on this September to COPD. So I know what it's like to go through that process on a personal basis. So um, I'm honored and thrilled to be able to be here to talk a little bit about some of the things that we're up to at DBRC. The average cost of a 4.8 day admission uh, by latest numbers is about $9,745. The cost continues to grow. As we look at indirect and direct uh, costs for uh, COPD, it's about almost $50 billion. And 40% of the costs could be avoided with prevention complications and reducing hospitalizations according to the NIH. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is, is certainly something that is uh, looming largely on the horizon. As we look at um, uh, 2030, not 20 years from now, uh, that we'll have over 150 million Americans who will have some type of a chronic condition. Today we're at about 100 million. But again, as we look at the baby boomers getting older, that number is going to explode. As we know, COPD is the third leading cause of death in the United States. And what's interesting, and this is according to CDC and AHRQ, 20% of hospitalized patients over the age of 40 uh, have been diagnosed with COPD at, at any given time. It was mentioned what the look of the COPD patient might be, John Houston, Merrill Chest, of yesteryear. Actually, it's more females now. In fact, some of the latest data shows that uh, the number of discharged patients uh, coming out of hospitals are females. And if you looked at the Surgeon General's report about 10 years ago, when it was called Women in Smoking, well, they put together a good argument as to why that might have been. And one of the more compelling arguments that I found was that post-World War II, up through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, a lot of the cigarette companies promoted smoking for women. You had pink cigarettes called Capris. You had Virginia Slims, where you've come a long way, baby, and, and some of those other things. And we're starting to see the, uh, uh, the outcome of those uh, unfortunate media blitzes uh, today. Again, somebody said we'll probably see this slide again, but as you can tell, COPD is something that's quite concerning and we need to uh, uh, be entirely focused on. So the, a little bit about the AARC, we're the American Association for Respiratory Care. We're about 67 years old, so we're still a rather young organization compared to physicians and nurses, but uh, we have 150,000 practicing respiratory therapists in the country and we represent their interests nationwide. We also advocate for uh, our RTs and for our patients. Uh, the, there was mention made of the drive for COPD earlier. We are very much involved, in fact, we're a partner with that uh, organization where we uh, really like to have the respiratory therapist be out in the community, be the face in the community of, of, of a person to teach the public a little bit more about pulmonary health and some of the risk factors uh, that they might have for COPD. One of our, uh, our featured keynote, rather, uh, in our Congress this year is Dr. Stephen Jenks. And probably many of you know, might know this work through the years. Uh, Dr. Jenks was uh, uh, with CMS and also later was an independent contractor. He's also a former uh, Assistant Surgeon General. But what he did was and, uh, he published a paper in 2009 which was called Rehospitalizations Among Patients in the Medicare Fee-for-Service Program. And in it, he was able to uncover the fact that a lot of uh, diseases uh, are costing a lot of money to Medicare. And some of the top diseases uh, are, are certainly uh, COPD. So what he talked about was really to put out the challenge to the clinical community, uh, respiratory therapists in particular, that we can have uh, a role reducing some of the uh, readmissions within 30 days back to the hospital. And I'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. The Affordable Care Act, of course, we all know about that. Uh, according to Medicare, uh, a, a study, one-fifth of all discharges readmit within 30 days, about 20%. COPD and pneumonia account for the second and third largest readmission rates within 30 days to hospitals. 
We also look at heart failure as, as another one as well. If you, if you lay this out and you uh, look at seven days and 15 days and 30 days, you see about 5% of the patients readmit. Uh, in 30 days, 13% of the patients readmit. And according to Dr. Jenks, uh, within one year's time, up to 55% of patients will readmit to hospitals uh, as a result of inadequate self-management or deterioration of their disease. Uh, and of course, the cost, as we look at the 30 days, goes up to about $12 billion a year. So there's penalties in place now for acute myocardial infarction readmissions, congestive heart failure, and pneumonia. And uh, October 1st next year, fiscal year 2015, uh, cabbage readmissions and COPD readmissions will be also on the uh, penalties for hospital, hospitalized patients as well. So the AERC is trying to be front and center on this as much as we can. We are promoting the disease management approach to, the, to chronic uh, lung disease. We have a couple of programs now. We have a COPD educator course, which we teach educators on how to best teach patients about their disease. Uh, we also um, uh, teach uh, therapists about disease management too. And I'll talk a little bit about how that's going to fall in line with the bill we have in Congress coming up. That's already been uh, put dropped in Congress. We have something called best practices. And what that is, is we're um, wanting to share with other respiratory therapists what others around the country have done in the hospital to promote education uh, and ongoing contact with the therapist and education post-discharge and how their impact has been seen uh, in line with their decreased readmissions. So a couple of examples that we uh, have been able to show. We have, a, if you're interested, and if you're an AERC member, you'd be able to see uh, a live or a taped conversation on, from a webinar that we uh, did live about two months ago where we had five different therapists from around the country talk about their programs. Uh, this particular program is in Emporia, Kansas, where the respiratory therapist does disease management in the hospital, prepares the patient, educates the patient, uh, but also acts as a smoking cessation counselor uh, when they come into the hospital. They, they also make sure that all patients are screened for obstructive sleep apnea when they're admitted as well. Uh, health literacy assessment uh, is uh, determined, and then they educate the patient at their level of understanding, which uh, certainly uh, varies across the board as we look at different patient groups. Uh, and then they have a respiratory therapist available for uh, phone calls from the patient, and the therapist reaches out to the patient by a phone call also. And that's one of the key successes to a lot of these self-management programs is to have that contact with the clinician once they leave the hospital. Uh, they drop their readmission rates in their first year from 18% to 4% as a result. Uh, another program a little closer to home, uh, the University of California, Davis, where they have a respiratory therapist, a COPD uh, manager. Uh, all patients receive uh, COPD education from this person. Uh, they, may, they manage the medications, uh, they make sure that the, the meds are correct and that the devices are, that the meds are being applied with are correct and that the patient understands how to use these devices. As you can see, they, have, they do their uh, breathing, their retraining, uh, energy conservation, oxygen assessment. They have a COPD answer line, and again, that reaching out to the patient post-discharge, which is so important. 81% of their patient, patients have severe COPD, uh, and uh, as you can see from their results from readmissions, it dropped from 16 to 5%, and when admitted, the average length of stay dropped from 7.5 to 5.4. Uh, again, uh, very promising numbers. There was a study done a couple of years ago up in Chicago, I think it was the University of Chicago, where they looked at patients admitted to the hospital they wanted to assess their capability of using aerosol devices. They primary, primarily looked at MDIs and discus devices, and they found that 86% of the patients uh, were not able to use the MDI correctly, and 71% of the patients the same thing. 
So what they did was they reached out, they had a respiratory therapist, a nurse, or I think or a physician to teach the patients how to use these devices correctly. And it took at least two sessions for them to understand uh, the proper technique such that they felt comfortable once they were able to uh, be sent home. But as respiratory therapists, this also affords us the opportunity in the hospital to assess, critique, and re-educate as necessary. Uh, in my many years as a respiratory therapist, I've seen a number of different ways of aerosol delivery, which sometimes makes you scratch your head, but that's what we're here for, to teach the patient. Another study called the RICE study, this was a multi-center VA study, where they had uh, patients who were pretty severe uh, COPD. Uh, all patients uh, had an overall, overall FEV1 of less than 37%. Um, 55% were on home oxygen, and again, it was a randomized blinding control multi-center study. The role of the therapist here was that they did a one to one and a half hour group session. They provided information about COPD. They critiqued inhaler technique, reviewed and adjusted meds as appropriate, like the others I just mentioned, provided smoking cessation counseling, uh, encouraged regular uh, exercise and hand hygiene. They gave them written uh, plans, action plans that they can use to help manage themselves. And again, they had a 24-hour VA helpline number, as well as the respiratory therapist reached out to the patients uh, throughout the post-discharge. In this study, they found that 41% of the patients uh, had a reduced uh, time in the hospital or uh, reduced emergency room visits and a significant improvement in self-reported quality of life. Uh, also, an increased use of lung and he brought a dilator, dilators with the respiratory therapy arm of the program. So, uh, again, um, I'm just bringing up a couple of examples, uh, as, at least from the respiratory therapy community, as to how respiratory therapists can play a vital role in working with patients beyond the walls of the hospital. And that puts us to HR 2619. That's a bill that Representative John Lewis introduced to Congress this last July. We're, we're garnering support uh, to get this bill moving ahead, but what this bill would allow is uh, to have the respiratory therapist in the physician's office uh, doing education beyond the hospital walls and disease management. And it would be primarily based on five chronic diseases, and they would be uh, asthma, COPD, cystic fibrosis, pulmonary hypertension, and pulmonary fibrosis. We are encouraging those who want to help us to contact uh, your congressman. If you're able to, we'd love to have you support us as we move forward with this. I know we have some supporters from California in Congress. I just don't know their names off the top of my head. But if you could, we have a website. It's AARC.org. Our patients have been a great supporter of this bill as well. Uh, this is, uh, I think, a year or two ago. Uh, where we were on Capitol Hill. But when we have our Hill Day in Congress, we, uh, we, have, we always welcome our patients to come with us. Uh, it's important for elected members of Congress to understand from the public, the person who lives in their community and uh, who has uh, suffering from that particular problem. So we partner quite heavily with our patients as we move forward. And this is a picture actually down in Dallas where our headquarters is down in Irving, Texas. And uh, we uh, tried to walk the talk too. We went to visit our congressman, and uh, his name is Kenny Marchand, uh, Sam Giordano, our former executive director, and myself, and Cheryl West went to visit him uh, just a few weeks ago. So, uh, again, as, as, a, as a, an association, we're trying to pr promote uh, the respiratory therapists out there, and certainly promote the fact that our patients need to have the advocacy that they so very much need to stay healthy and have that.